Hello, my name is Matana Vital, Senior Solutions Engineer at Kaminaria. In this video, we're going to see Kaminaria support for Flocker, an open source container data volume manager for your Dockerized applications. Before jumping into the deep water, let's start with a quick introduction to containers, and to do so, we'll compare containers with a well known brother, Virtual Machines, or VMs. VMs allows us to run multiple isolated applications on top of shared hardware. To do so, the hypervisor is emulating the hardware for each and every VM. Then, on each of those VMs, an operating system is installed to enable services or other applications to run. As each VM has its own emulated hardware and operating system, some valuable resources are wasted. And wasted resources are, well, they do not help your business value. Now let's take a look at containers in a super high level. On top of a physical machine, we'll have an operating system installed, and in our case, that would be a Linux operating system. Like in every operating system, there is an area called a user space, and in this user space, we run our applications and services. What containers do is to allow us to have multiple isolated user spaces, and in each of those user spaces, or better known as containers, it allows us to run applications in a lightweight manner with less CPU, memory, and storage consumption. The next piece in the puzzle is Docker. To understand what Docker is, here's a quote from Docker's website. Docker containers wrap a piece of software in a complete file system that contains everything needed to run. Code, runtime, system tools, system libraries, anything that can be installed on a server. This guarantees that the software will always run the same regardless of its environment. As Docker images contains everything needed for them to run, they tend to be stateless, which means that when the container dies, all changes inside the container are lost. For some applications, this is not a problem. Start again your container wherever you wish, and it will do the same job it did before. But what happens when you want to keep changes inside the container for the longer term, or alternatively, make them persistent? This is the point where Flocker gets into the picture. Flocker manages Docker containers and data volumes together. When you use Flocker to manage your microservice, your volumes will follow your containers when they move between different hosts in your cluster. Our environment in this demo is pretty simple and includes a Kaminer K2 all flash array, three Linux hosts composing our cluster, and a single Linux host acting as the client. In addition, we use ClusterHQ's volume hub to monitor the cluster in a nicer and easy way. Before creating any container, let's see the current state of the Flocker cluster. The command flockerctl list nodes will list the three members in the cluster. The command flockerctl ls shows that currently no volumes, or datasets as they called in Flocker, are managed by Flocker. We can also see the same information from Volume Hub in an illustrated and clearer look. From the first node in the cluster, we'll create a new container running MongoDB with an external volume attached to it. To do so, We'll use Docker command line specifying Flocker as the volume driver with the Kminario K2 already configured as the backend storage for Flocker. The command also includes a name for the volume and the mount point inside the container. From the K2 GUI, we can see that Flocker automatically creates the host and needed volumes in the K2 and attach them to the newly created host. One volume is for the data itself and the other one is for saving configuration. Once the new container was created, we can see a list of running containers using the docker ps command line, including the newly created container. Again, we'll take a quick look at Volume Hub and we can see that it shows the same information. Next, we'll connect to the MongoDB shell using a linked container. Once connected, we will create a new collection and insert some new data into that collection. Before leaving the shell, we search the collection to make sure all data is in there. To simulate a failed container, we will remove the container with a force flag. Next step would be running a new container in the second node of the cluster, using the same volume as before. In order to use the same volume, we're using the same volume name that was given before while we created the first container. In the K2 GUI, we can see that a new volume was created for the configuration, and the data volume was moved from the first node to the second one. After the new container was created, we'll connect to the MongoDB shell once again using a linked container to make sure all data is in place. Thanks for watching, and for more information, please visit us at kminero.com.